Tharangambadi. Tharangambadi, formerly Tranquibar Danish. Tranquibar, pronounced yesh ra in gk at pa, is a town in the Mailadathurai district of the Indian state of Tamil Nadu on the Karamandal coast. It lies 15 kilometers 9.3 by north of Karakal, near the mouth of the distributary named Upanar of the Kaveri River. Tranquibar was established on 19 November 1620 as the first Danish trading post in India. King Christian, Roman IV, had sent his envoy of Gijed, who established contact with Raghunathanayak of Tanjore. An annual tribute was paid by the Danes to the Raja of Tanjore until the colony of Tranquibar was sold to the British East India Company in 1845. Tharangambadi is the headquarters of Tharangambadi Taluk. Its name means place of the singing waves. The old designation Tranquibar remains current in modern Danish. Tharangambadi is located at the distance of 285 km from Chennai. The nearest airport is at Tarakairapalli International Airport at 172 km, and the nearest port is at Karakal at 26 km. The beach in Tharangambadi has been identified as the one of the most ozone rich beaches in the world by various studies conducted by the Danes in 1960s and Indian researchers. The ozone content in air is said to be high between April and July. However, the presence of rich ozone O3 content and the role it plays in absorbing the hazardous ultraviolet rays coming from the sun remains an unknown fact for most of the locals. Though unaware of its scientific importance, residents say the beach and the fort drives the local economy by attracting visitors. History The place dates back to the 14th century. Masalamani Nathar Shiva Temple was built in 1306 in a land given by Maravarman Kuleskara Pandian I. As of now, this temple is the oldest monument. Until 1620, when the Danes came, the place was under Thangevernaic Kingdom. Danish Admiral Ov Djed felt the place would be a potential trading center, made a deal with Rakhanathanaic, and built a fort, which is known as Fort Dansborg. A Jesuit Catholic congregation in Tranquibar predated the arrival of the Danes by several decades. This congregation descended from Tamil fishermen converted by Portuguese missionaries from Goa. There was also a sizable population of Indo-Portuguese due to their presence nearby in Nagapatina. The Catholic Church was probably demolished to build the fort. This fort was the residence and headquarters of the governor and other officials for about 150 years. It is now a museum hosting a collection of artifacts from the colonial era. Among the first Protestant missionaries to set foot in India were two Lutherans from Germany, Bartholomaus Zietbalg and Heinrich Pluchow, who began work in 1705 in the Danish settlement of Tranquibar. Zietbalg translated the Old and New Testaments into Tamil, imported a printing press, and printed the New Testament in Tamil in 1714. The local people were forced to learn the broken Portuguese that was the lingua franca between Indians and Europeans at the time, and later on translated the Bible into the local Tamil language. They also established a printing press, which within a hundred years of its establishment in 1712 had printed 300 books in Tamil. At first they only made little progress in their religious efforts, but gradually the mission spread to Madras, Cuddalore and Tanjore. Today, Bishop of Tranquibar is the official title of a bishop in the Tamil Evangelical Lutheran Church Telk in South India, which was founded in 1919 as a result of the German Lutheran Leipzig Mission and Church of Sweden. The seat of the bishop, the cathedral and its church house Tranquibar House, is in Turakairapalli. The Zion Church was consecrated in 1701, which is the oldest Protestant church in India. In 1718, the New Jerusalem Church was constructed. Moravian Brethren missionaries from Hernhut, Saxony established the Brethren's Garden at Porayar near Tranquibar and operated it as a missionary center for a number of years. An Italian Catholic father, Constanzo Bischai, who worked in the colony from 1711 to 1740, found himself in conflict with the Lutheran pioneers at Tranquibar, against whom he wrote several polemical works. 
Tranquibar was occupied by the British in February 1808 during the Napoleonic Wars, but was restored to Denmark following the Treaty of Kiel in 1814. Along with the Danish settlement of Surampur in Bengal, it was sold to the British in 1845. Tranquibar was then still a busy port, but it later lost its importance after a railway was opened to Nagapatnam. The Subramania Temple, Purumbur, located in the outskirts of the town, is one of the most prominent Murugan temples in the region. Tranquibar Museum The 17th and 18th century antiquities and relics from the Vijayanagara Empire and Thanjavarnayak Kingdom, which authorized, allowed, and sanctioned the aforementioned Danish port township connected with the colonial period and Danish settlement at Faringampani are exhibited. The museum contains porcelain ware, Danish manuscripts, glass objects, Chinese tea jars, stetata lamps, decorated terracotta objects, figurines, lamps, stone sculptures, swords, daggers, spears, pseudo-stucco figurines and wooden objects. There is also part of a whale skeleton, a giant selfish rostrum and small cannon balls. New Jerusalem Church The New Jerusalem Church was built in 1718 by the Royal Danish missionary Bartholomeus Zijn Balg in the coastal town of Tranquibar, India which was at that time a Danish India colony. The church is located on King Street and church services are conducted every Sunday. The church along with other buildings of the Tranquibar mission was damaged during the tsunami of 2004 and were renovated at a cost of INR 7 million and re-consecrated in 2006. Fort Dansborg Construction of Fort Dansborg started in 1620. Many parts of the fort have been reconstructed several times. Dansborg is the second largest Danish fort ever constructed with Kronborg and Helsinger being the largest. The rampart wall is a fairly large four-sided structure, with bastions at each cardinal point. A single storied building was constructed along three inner sides of the rampart, with barracks, warehouse, kitchen, and jail. The rooms on the southern side remain in good condition, but the rooms on the western and northern sides have been substantially damaged. On the eastern side of the fort, there was a two-storied building facing the sea. It was the main building of the fort. The vaulted lower story served as a magazine and a warehouse, while the vaulted upper story contained the church and the lodgings of the governor, the senior merchants, and the chaplain. The sea on the eastern and western side protected the fort. The fort was surrounded by a moat, access to the fort being over a drawbridge. The moat has completely disappeared. Interestingly, today none of the fort's doors and windows have doors in them. It is believed that during the end of their colonization period, the Danish ran into financial issues. To make ends meet, they pulled out the metal doors, molded them into weapons, and sold them. Demographics As of 2001 India Census, Faringambadi had a population of 20,841. Males constitute 48% of the population, and females 52%. Faringambadi has an average literacy rate of 74%, higher than the national average of 59.5%, male literacy is 79%, and female literacy is 69%. In Faringambadi, 10% of the population is under 6 years of age. Gallery